Hello guys, welcome to Deep Course and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 131 that says palindrome partition. So here we are given a string S and we need to make partition inside the string S such that each and every substring of the partition is palindrome and we need to return all the possible palindrome partitions. So let's take a look at this example. So for here you can partition this AB, AAB string in like this way. The first string with A, then A, then B. When all the substring of this partition are palindrome, right? Okay. Now we can partition it like this also because this A is palindrome, B is palindrome. So for this string A, B, we can partition in two ways, and these are the two different ways where we can partition such that every substring of the partition is a palindrome. Correct? Uh, similarly, here we uh, there is only one way to partition that is this. So I hope you guys got the question that uh, let's say if we have any string like a, A, B, C, then uh, we need to find the number of ways we can partition this and such that e, uh, each substring of the partition is palindrome. So like we can partition it's like A, A, B, C or we can partition it like A, A, B, C. Okay, uh, so here there, there are two ways. These are the two ways where we can partition uh, uh, this string. So if you have some other string like A, A, B, C, C. Then uh, what is the one way to partition is like A, A, B, C, C. Then another is A, A, B, C, C. Another way is A, A, B, C, C. Okay. So these are the different ways where you can partition this string. And also there is one way A, A, B, C, C where there is no partition. So this is also one valid answer. So we need to return all this different partition uh, to our answer. See, as you can see here we have vector vector of string. So this is vectors of vectors of string where we read all different possible partitions. Okay, so now uh, since uh, one thing to note here is see, uh, we need to what we need to return, we need to all return all possible answers. So whenever there is something like this where we need to return all possible answer, uh, then one thing to remember is the question is about backtracking. Because what uh, we do in backtracking, if we get one answer, okay, we will store it and we will then again backtrack uh, to get another answer. So that's why to generate all possible answer, we will do backtrack. And further, what uh, we will do to optimize this approach, let's say, so you, I hope you guys got the intuition of backtrack. Now to optimize this and to uh, see whether the string from I to J is palindrome or not, we will make one dp of uh, i j where dp of i j will either store minus one or zero or one so minus one means we haven't calculate, calculated the substring from i to j zero that means uh, that is the substring from i to j is not palindrome and one that means substring of i to j is palindrome okay so these two things we will keep in mind while solving this question now also if you uh, let's say for this example a, A, B, C, C, uh, you can uh, try to, to derive a choice diagram. So choice diagram is like say partition A here or not to partition. So let's say if you partition it would be A, B, C, C or not to partition it would be B, C, C. Then again for this say there are two choices to partition and not to partition. Then it would be like A, A, B, C, C and to partition A, A, B, C, C. Now, as you can see here, this is also palindrome, this is also palindrome, this is not palindrome. So, we need to make partition also. This is palindrome, this is not palindrome. So, here also we will again make choices until this become palindrome. Got it? So, the similar thing we would do here. We would not, if we won't make partition, then we would check for here. If can we make partition here or not. So, this is how we can, you can derive the choice diagram for this question. And whenever... Uh, you get an answer, you will store the answer and will backtrack. Okay, so now let's move ahead to the coding part here where we will gain more understanding. So let me first initialize one answer variable that would be uh, the 2D vector of strings. One dp variable of size 17 and 70. This is a 2D dp because the uh, maximum length is 16, so we took uh, the size of the dp as 17. We would store initially minus one value to dp using meme set function. Now we will also take one temporary vector of string that will store the current answer. 
and we will uh, make one solve function where we would backtrack. So here we will pass n, sorry, the string s, then uh, this temporary vector of string and zero. That would be the current positive index, and then we would return answer. Okay. Now let us code this solve function. String s vector of string. Let me take name it as current and int index. So now uh, the base condition would be if index is greater than equal to s dot size, then what we would simply do return. But before return, we would also store this current in our answer. So we would push back current to answer. Now we will loop from index till the last element that is s dot size. And if is palindrome. That means if a string s is palindrome from index to i, then what we can do, we can make uh, we can push that substring into this current vector. Okay, because we got one palindrome string. So what we do, we will do current dot push back s dot substring s v s t r from index to index plus i minus one. Okay, and we would again call for this solve function current and we would pass i plus one. So that is for the next index and we would pop back so this is the backtracking step where we once added the substring and we will again remove that so that is to backtrack so this is a backtracking step and in the end we would simply return uh, now our task is to code this is parameter function so we will that would be a boolean function where we would take string as int r and int j that is the starting and the ending index so if dp of i and j is not equal to minus one. That means we have already computed the answer, and we would simply return dp of i and j. And in the and if this is not the case, then we would check for palindrome. That is, if i is less than j, if s of i not equal to s of j, then what we would store? We will store uh, for dp of i of j is false. That means it is not a palindrome, and we would also return false. Otherwise, this we would simply Increment over i and decrement over j pointer, and in the end, if this condition is false, means all the if the string has this palindrome, then it will be written true, and also store it into the dp. Okay, now let me try to run this code. Okay, it would be you. Okay, so we are taking here one substring wrong. That would our starting index is i d x, but ending index would be i minus i d x. This would be the thing and plus one. So our ending index would be i minus i d x plus one uh, because the i is uh, greater than index. So that's why this is the thing. Let us try to look and run this and try to submit this. So yeah, our code got accepted. So this was uh, all about the backtracking. Where if we get a palindrome substring from index to i, then we would store it and we would check for the remaining substring. So I hope you guys understood the approach as well as the code for this. Now talking about the time complexity, since the total number of substring possible here are two to the power n, so our time complexity would be big of n into two to the power n, and the space complexity would be n square, where n we are uh, where n is the size of this string. So time complexity is n into two to the power n, and space complexity is big of n square. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys like this video and understood the solution. But still, if you have any doubts, then you can let me know in the comment section. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.